I could tell you an awful lot now about this little village of Imley and all the changes that have taken place over the years. This was a very vibrant village at one time. We had 13 pubs here in this little village at one time. And the vast majority of them as well, they had a grocery. Well, everyone had a ration book. Yes. And they were all the coupons and the local shop of us was Tom the Wiles. At that time, and you're going with your ration book, it did take up so many coupons that you got according to the amount of messages you got. Yes. If the, mes the, if the messages were rationed, if they weren't, you didn't need the book. Everybody had to shop at home. People didn't go to town in those days mm -hmm. because there were very few cars for staff and then there was the war years and there was no petrol and they didn't go. So every sh everybody shopped locally. But the thing is, they were well catered for locally. Mm -hmm. You had three drapery shops yes. and you had the tailors and you had the um, dressmakers so there was no excuse like for not having your thing as made anyway. Yeah. You know? mm -hmm. um, now as well as that we had um, all you need, okay, we had a butcher's stall, Jack Lund's, the butcher's stall. You had, um, we had two forges. Yeah, there were two hotels in India at that time, of course. You had Higgins at, nearly at the other end of the village. Where, where the Thatches? Where the Thatches now, yeah. Yes. Yeah. And then you had John English, of course, which was, at that time, it was Daly's, Daly's Hotel. Yes. And uh, it was a public house and a hotel when, I suppose, maybe years before before I went to school, I'm sure. It was an awful place in the morning. It was as bad as O'Connor Street, no one knew it. It was a very busy place. All of the family went to school in Emily. <coughs> And we went there until we were 14 years of age, that was. When we started off in infants, it was mixed. You had boys and girls. The school teacher was Mrs. Mack. And the woman who just come over to prayer, she was Mrs. Faye, the school teacher. And then she was teaching for the, the infants, high infants and low infants, we used to call them that time. She was cycling out every morning from the prairie. We used to be praying for rain or snow that you wouldn't, <laughs> <laughs> that you wouldn't be able to come at all. Pray she was a lovely, lovely woman. We always were late because we had a long journey to walk and it was raining. We'd be taking shelter under a bush here or a bush there. Above at Possers, which is now Breen's, there was a chute coming out of the, of the, the cow horse, which was on the side of the road. And I saw some of the lads to go over and put their head under the shoes and if the water goes down the, their back thinking they'd be sent home. Oh. When they were that wet. Yes. He did work on a few occasions. <laughs> when he had the teachers got wise to it for a finish. How was it they were all wet in the same place, you know? Wise. Yeah. Right. We used to get a creepy feeling when we were coming <laughs> near the school. My father was a very strict man, and you could get a few letters. My mother wasn't that type of person, but it was in every home. And I tell you, I don't know how at all. And you were just out of school, and if you went home and told your parents, you get twice as many when you came home, because you were up to some development for doing it. In I infants, I went from there on to, I think it was, Fitzpatrick. He kept first, second and third class. Ah. Mr. Loftus kept fourth, fifth, sixth and if there was three or four. And you had only three teachers though? Three teachers. But there was forty. In that class? The forty and fourth class. Then there was fifth class. I'd be in sixth class. Yes. And there was three and seventh class. That was Mr. Loftus's but he had a great, Mr. Loftus, he had a great interest in his pupils and how they went. But there was a lot of pupils that needed a little bit of individual tuition, if you like, that didn't get it. And couldn't get it. And couldn't get it because the teacher couldn't give it to him. Now he'd finish 
he'd finished at three o'clock or half three in the evening and he'd have to take the homework then and take it home and check it out for the evening. He was working at home as well as in school. And you used to do a few runs there for, for Mr. Loftus? Uh. Oh, I was bringing Mr. Loftus' lunch for surely four years. When they come to 12 o'clock in the day, he'd say, Me hard cry care, five more on. Was me hard cry care, glad to hear that. Out the door. <laughs> Escape the catechism. People talk a lot of him. Although he could be brutal enough to when he liked. And would you be rewarded any bit at all for getting this lunch every day? Would I be what? Would you get rewarded? No, I'd have to cheat when I go down. Oh, yes. So I go down for his lunch. Yes. I'd bring up the sandwiches and a white gallon, a white uh, enamel gallon. I always remember it. I'd have to cheat there and sandwiches as well. We'll go school. across the road today and this to the hotel oh. for our lunch. We get lovely ones that just come down from Thompson's and Cork. And then we uh, we just get permission to go down the street, to go down to Higgins. We'd go down there for the bread and jam. Mm. So, so you can remember um, the um, shop opening in and at the cross, the wires? Was I do I remember. He just opened a little bicycle. Dish. A small little shed for a. Um, he was mending bicycles. Was there a shop there now? Where no, there was no shop there. Only, uh, only uh, um, a hedge and a uh, field. Mm -hmm. His wife was a great businesswoman. She was at, at the hotel and at Daly's. Mm -hmm. She was in the bar there and doing the shop there. Mm -hmm. and she was she was from the Lynn and she was a great businesswoman. Tom had um, a hackney car and he used to have it back at Daly's at the hotel. Mm -hmm. But he was sat in Minden bicycles and then he he built up from that. Oh, yes. That's where he ended with the shop. And of course there was no electricity, there was no running there water, there the, was no water. But of course the people, uh, people hadn't as much bills, the, the spuds, the bacon and the cabbage like. They were served up for the dinner. They were all home grow, home produced, like they did people rare families on very small acreages of land, like, you know. They'd have been taught like how to make ends meet, like. People must remember everybody had to buy paraffin oil all the time because we had no electricity. So the only light we had were the lamps on the wall. But we had no water in the village. So we had a pump, we had Connell's pump, there was one outside the pub, we pump. One here. and there was one here, and there and was one, one below, and, yeah. Place, yeah. There? Yeah. and then you had the barrels outside the rainwater for washing, you see, yeah. and of course no washing machines, and the, uh, there was no electricity, scrubbing board. You sell the scrubbing board, so yeah. above, yeah, yeah. When you think of it like, all the labour there was, uh, those yeah. days, the hard work to be done, you know. But people didn't tend to have big families there, you know, the 10 and 11 and 12 children there, I don't know how they managed them children at all. And if they wanted to bat the children, what would they do, have a... No, we said there were bells of water then as well, mm -hmm. you know, but we, yeah. st we, we still, I still use them. Gavin, the Gavin I used to bat them in front of the fire. Oh, oh that's all, yeah. Maybe some small children were washed in the Going back to that time again, David Burke, your neighbour. Oh, yeah. I don't know, he was a funny old geezer. The rest of his brothers, Mike and Morgan, Morgan was the man that founded the GA and Emily. We, we, were, we only played home, you see. I was when we were at home, he had a name of the... The Holland, the Holland League came on, you know, and we, was, we were met for the Holland, you know. And we, we, we got home with the Holland and Pecky Brennan. He, he, he was ahead of us there. And uh, I remember he saying, he, he could be good at all. He said, at the football, he said, if he wanted to do it, he says, I don't want to play with this. <laughs> but anyway, the Holland would be on first of all, up for Christmas. And after the, after the Holland, you had to do the football. So it was only our football. So of course we did the football then as well. Oh, yeah. Oh, Packy Nair Yeah. I thought just he. he he put up that hair pattern there, he had it up for his 
machinery, the, 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 I suppose still around the time of the thrashing and all that during the emergency. He opened the post, of course, with, with, with pictures. Yes. And the first picture that was ever shown there was Maytime. 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 It was, uh, uh, what's it called? Oh, it is a special name for it. It was a musical. Oh. And Maytime, starring Jeanette MacDonald and who else? I can't bring the second name. And would you be well supported? Oh, of course it would. Be. In the early stages it was well supported. But like everything, things die away after a while too. Yes. Right. Yeah. And it, it, there was um, dances then held there. Uh, oh, there was. There used to be a practice dance then every Wednesday night. We were going to him later than I was, uh, I was off at the hood ball there and at the scrap. Papa, Papa's a scrap. It would be a uh, second night of the hunt ball to be uh, to be ten shillings the first night and to be three and six the second night. That's what they call the scripture. We learned Irish dancing here in the hall from a um, lady called um, Brady Downs from not long. Did you know? Just oh, yeah, the right, of the yeah. county, Brady Downs came over every Saturday, mm. and we got our dancing lessons there. So we were fully occupied, there was no, it was never a dull moment. We made our own fun, our own amusement. But like we had all the, all the exercise, we had all the cycling. Skipping was a big thing for girls as well. We all had our skipping ropes. We'd skip by ourselves, or some two would hold it, and you'd they're skipping, you'd hop in the middle and that's skipping and walking. Yeah. We always used the railway. John, 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 John Slattery would be out on the bridge warning us we get killed. He gave us <laughs> We didn't take the blindest bit of notice, you know, we carried on. Where would you have gone to by train from him? I went back to my aunt's in Turner for them. Oh, yeah. In the train. Go to Tipperary in the train. And um, would you. Uh, Change at the junction and go into Tipperary. Travellers, they, they come by train to Emily. Yes. And their, their pony and trap, to do it be a sidecar, would need to travel at the train. And he'd come down to Mulhall's or to Daly's Hotel, and he might stay there for three or four days. So, Packy Ryan used to act as a, a courier? He was a courier, yeah, he was. And he'd do Galbury, he'd do Latin, he'd do Kizili, he'd do Emily. He could go all the different places around. He could be selling foodstuffs, hardware or whatever. He'd be taking orders from the people. And the stuff would arrive on then by train to Emory Station. And Packy Ryan Roney, yes. he'd go up with his dinner and car and bring down the stuff to the people that had it orders in Emory. And maybe take some of them to Latin or wherever. How would you get to Mass on a Sunday then? Oh, on, on the trap car, horse and trap. We get back frost in there. There was only a bit of town, a bit of town, at the sides of the road was left rough. There was a bigger bow in the boat to throw off the, the water. Then the, then the, now the roads are flat now, mm. but they were a little bit in the centre to throw off the water. And, uh, if, if the horse that was tired and to be to be tough slippery, there would be fierce frost now, and it'd be trying to bring on the horse by to keep him inside by the to travel on the on the roof inside. There'd be, there'd be one wheel inside and that near, nearly to die. But um, you you would get there like and then and the bad the bad times the horse couldn't travel at all. But frost. We walked the team, not about walking, half seven for half eight, mass limbly. Say the third day in Emily, anything like up to, I suppose, 50 or 60 wagon loads would go off to the north wall. Straight from Emily. You would have no school in Emily the fair day. Would there be buyers coming? There'd be buyers coming. And, dealers, yeah. and they'd, be, they'd come the day before off of the train and they'd be staying in the hotels. 
I've got to be up at four o'clock in the morning <coughs> to, to, and get ready to go out and it could be flogging rain. Yes. But you didn't mind, you young fellas didn't mind that. You'll be looking forward to it. You know, the old top coat ready there on a cap since the night before and a stick for the drive to castle or what have you. Yeah. And the windows would be blocked up, they'd be timbers put up and them and again the doors and all the cattle were on the street. Cattle from the railway across, back nearly, nearly as far as Carroll's Cross. Right. Now that was a fair street. And Just they were all walked along the road. They came up from Palace and from every place around. Everyone was walking cattle. We got the pubs to be packed out. Yes. And put them up and down the streets and singing uh, the Valley of Knock and Over. I remember where it was going to be all the more ribbed songs. And the cattle then, when they'd be lost, they'd be going taken off to the. They'd be taken off up to the railway up and oh. and taken off in the train. Mm, no sure. lorries that time, only up in the train. Mm. You'd have to take them to the station. Oh, yeah. We just walk up from, from Molly's below the back and we walk up to, through the street and down. And uh, I couldn't name a few houses, but, but the poverty and the children, the poverty was a tower in, 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 the, in the village. People that hadn't the clothes on them to, to fit. They'd be ashamed to be seen in them the rags they were in. Things are very poor about that. And they'd come to the church and they'd come to the outside the church and fill up the back of it. They, would, they wouldn't dare go, go up the church. You would have been privileged almost to be in, from, from a, on a farm or something? Yeah, to have, some, to have something decent. Uh, and, to, to, uh, on the floor, on the line of floors. Like, uh, and would you, ha would you have had shoes now if you were, if you were walking over to Mass? No, I'd have strong boots. There is an awful change in my lifetime, like, in the farming end of it, like. We say we milk cows by hand, we turned hay with a fork and made cocks of it and brought it out of the wet patch up on the hill, like, you know. The butt care was for manure. There was sides in it and the back, and you take it off. Put in as well as that. When you go out to the field with the, with the, with the butt care, you pull down, there's an atom in it, and you lift it up, and the dung would slide off it. You go in, then you come out in with the fuck later on, and you'd spread it. And then the trashing and all, and that was an awful job, because people hadn't any cookers that time, only an open fire and trying to have a, a dinner and to keep it hot, and everything for them. But you have a lot of people in. And you would have you would have about twenty four for a day of a, of a, of a treasure. Mm. And they, they wouldn't be all needed at all. But you would have that crowd. They'd all gather around. Your Michael Collins's nephew was a uh, was one and one of the inspectors coming around. Michael Collins's nephew was mm. it? Yeah. He was a lovely fella too. Yeah. Mm. So you'd have to grow a certain amount of tillage, was You'd have to grow a certain amount of tillage, yeah. Oh, yeah. We've a, a, a plot down near the back of the cottage we used to make here. That's it, about 1955 and 1956. But I was going to a man one time to dig potatoes, a very old man, and he was very bad in the eggs. When I was going to school, I used to go picking the potatoes for him. And then... Um, we were out this day anyway, and we were cleaning, and you'd have to go along the drill, you see, and pull all the scrag, clean the drill before you start digging. Well, they had a little plough in hearts. Everyone had cows, like, so many cows. Even somebody with an acre or two, they had a cow. They had, sure, even Dr. Jordan, like. He had, had a cow? Two, had two cows, he had two cows there. Ah. Oh, sure, only the meat and the cows and all, and out in the rain and out in the wet, and now people are talking about it, getting a drop of rain, and they have the umbrella over it. Uh, so you used to have to... Like, I often got a good drink. Would you take the milk down to the cream and emily? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Frank Corkin would bring it in the bucket. He would? Mm -hmm. 
And so there's probably a great social thing in 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 the in the thing in Emily's in the cream in Emily's. Oh, it was. It was it a way of people meeting, of course, every day as well. Going in, going to the shopping, and well, when the cream they shut their like and. Uh, you wondered what you what you do with the man and to start with like you know <laughs> and then we'll say when the milk machine came in was it a great uh, what was a godsend yeah was that more important nearly than the electricity it was, it was, a, <laughs> it was very important the yeah. milk machine yeah. yeah i was talking to so-called well-to-do people at that time i'm talking about and when I meet them today, and they tell me what they had at that time, is and it, it was different? It was a lot different from what you had. It was a lot different at all. From yes. One man described it very well when he said to me one day, we were talking about this very same thing. Look, Tommy, he said, none of us had anything at all. He said at that time, but by God, he said, didn't we share it between us? <laughs> You see, and he was right. You had not. He had not. He could see shares. <laughs> I remember your Russian for coupons. Sugar, sugar, your coupons. Mm. Yeah, your coupons, and you, you set the amount for the for the sugar and tea. And tea. And of course, we had the milk with you. So, but um, it's all I remember uh, 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 you, uh, the only way my mother could do was. Push your sugar in a, in, a, in a jam jar, and do that was it. Until following Monday or Friday, whichever, whatever to come there. And, and uh, we all we all had our coat. You know, there wouldn't be any. You could eat it. All, you could have it all your sugar on the Monday or night, or pull it down for the week. And we would have it in a jam jar. My, my father was. Um, I, I I don't know. You see, he he was one of the old IRA. Yes. And uh, he, he was a young fella, I suppose, when he joined, maybe 18 or 19 or whatever, 20. Yes. And he was dead at 36. Yes. Because he was shot and wounded up at the back of the creamery, St. Elby's. And he lived on for about 18 years after that shooting. He died just the evening of the day that Paddy Connolly came to see him. They were good friends and he lived just up the road. And he said, Paddy, he says, my wound is oozing today like it always was after that length of time. And of course in the in the troubled times when they had the big thing, the rescue. rescue of Sean Hogan at the station of La Clon, that was meant for Emily. Because the one coming from Cork used to meet the one coming from Dublin, normally, at Emily. And the, the big thing there was to rescue Sean Hogan. And, and that's the way they, they took over the house where I, where I was born there. The, ta the, the Tans came in, you see. And they found out that there was a lot of bicycles left in. They come down from Galway in the overriders. And they uh, had planned to put all their stuff in and they dug a, a, a little trench across the road, just above Pad's gate uh, so that any trucks going up hit it in. But the ones that knew it went that way. And to set up for the yeah, ambush. Here. But the Greyhound is not travelling today. Was the SOS they came through. They christened him the Greyhound. Right. But the train did come. But it timing it with the other one. And they had to have the second train. But the, the timing it with that, they maintained great meeting in lockdown, which they did. And uh, Sean Hawkins would be there in the carriage, you see. And policemen there, 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 there. there. Our house, unfortunately, my father said, was wasn't put because his mother, his unfortunately, mo his mother, his mother was very ill at the time, and someone begged it from and said there was a woman in the bed there, and strangely enough, the only thing they bought was the hair bond. 
but I remember the to hear him talking about the barrack being burned in Imlay and Quish's house was burned and Kelly's house was burned and McGrath's house was burned. And Schlatterich's initial by hand was burned as well. Yes. And who, who else? Or oh, Michael Quish's in Balboa. Yes. Um, Tom Quish's, there were no, no Michael and Tom, they were brothers of course, they were living in the one house. But Callahan was important because the old woman, who was my mother, she was my grandmother, of course, too. She wouldn't get out of the bedroom and let them burn the house. She said, if you want to burn it, you'd have to burn it with me in bed. I can't move. I strip it completely. And whoever was in charge, the officer, the officer said, come on and leave the old bitch where she is. <laughs> right. And you, you mentioned Slattery's there of, of this by hand. Um, you know, um, Tom's uncle, Willie, Willie Slattery. Willie Slattery. He, he met a, a terrible end. He did indeed, yeah. They just came in, the Black and Tans came in. He was, he, he was just in for his dinner. In the middle of the day. In the middle of the day, yeah. And they came in around the place. And who was working here was K Kate Hogan from Mrs. Lundergan. Yes. After she was working here, like, and uh, she, would you say they just came in? They came from different directions. He had no chance of escaping or. So it was well, it was, it was, it was well planned. It was well planned. It was well planned. planned. Well planned. So Elby Kelly told me a lot yes. of what went on. So Elby was on the move, same as the rest of them. Yeah, he he know. But the lawyers pulled up. He said the two lawyers that were there. They pulled up. <coughs> Michael Quish was in one of the lawyers. Yes. And Slattery was in the other one. Yes. And they, they took him off the lorry and they slapped him up against the, con the stone wall. And they kept beating him his head off the wall until he fell down unconscious on the ground. Yes. And Michael Quish told us, it'll be Kelly after. He said, I said to him, the soldiers that, that I was with, can't you stop him? They'll kill him. Oh, I said, yeah, we have nothing to do. They're a mother gang. They do the same to us. Right, right. right. There's nothing we can do. Yeah. Only look what we're told. Yes. So, so they tied him onto the back of the lorry, and his head, it appeared, was hopping off of the road. That he had practically no head right. when he arrived in Tipperary. And seemingly over near Roseboro, he was. Um thrown out of the back of the truck. Just below Latin on the left hand side. They took him to the prairie. Yeah. And your granduncle and Mulcahy man where John Lee is living. The Mulcahy man, I think in Delaney, he was a criminal manager was he? Yeah he was there was yes. The two of them I think went in later on the of the day to find out what happened to him and I'm sure of course came home with the news that he was dead like you know my granny now that lived with us here like she lived till 1968 1968 yes but uh, she never spoke of him like to her mm. she never spoke of him at all uh, just above Pat Hennessy's former home mm. there was a pub there and that was Lonergan's. And we all know the bit of history attached to that, that the two IRA are yeah, two sure, yeah. uh, black and tan sitting at the counter and in the mirror they saw someone running across the field behind them mm -hmm. and they went out and they shot him. And that was Jossie Mara from That's right. Bellahone. Mm -hmm. yeah. The other man that had a big influence in the War of Independence no. was um, Morris Mead. Morris Mead, oh yeah. No, um, Captured by he was originally um, in the British Army. Yes. Oh, he was. He yeah. wasn't. He, he was in it as a young fella. Yes. He, he was only about sixteen. Uh, he told me himself, and uh, his sister got him out and told him that he was underage, so they told him go home. But he made another go after again, and they didn't follow him anymore. Yeah. So uh, he joined the army then and went out. He was in, gave a good fight in, in the First World War. Yes. 
It's a big bit of a bully and he could be set up a night, you know. And he tied um, the East Limerick. Um, the the East Limerick Brigade, he did, yeah. yeah. In uh, Kilfedden. Um, yeah, uh, and he, he went back to, along to his own place when he came back. And um, he went into the barrack in Hilton. Yes. And, and the policeman there pulled a quick one on him. And he, he had gone on the phone to tell him he had him. So they came and collected him. N not after he escaped and at all, just after that he escaped. Yes. From yes. Clown Mill. From Clown Mill, yeah. yes. Yeah, yeah. And would you, would you have known much about the war at the time, actually? Would you, say, you, know, from, from, would you have got a newspaper every day now to tell you what was going on now? We would. Yeah, there was a newspaper every day, a penny. Penny for the newspaper. My granddad would always watch that. He, he, he gets the newspaper from the boy would bring the, uh, the newspaper from the family. The same as we were doing now. So <laughs> you think it's home with him? Home with him and read the dates right away. Oh, no, But um, they were hard times. No, people had to be a bit frugal in the way they, they worked and money was scarce and everybody was employed. You had brands above now. There was two men working in the yard. There was a girl in the shop and they had a girl in the kitchen and you could buy anything you wanted there. Turf, coal, oil, paint, butter, paint, tea, sugar, glass, timber, anything at all you'd be talking about from an anchor, from a needle to an anchor, they had it at France. Tell me, when did your father come to Emily first and how did he set up his business? Yeah. He came in 1918, but when he left school he uh, served his time for the hardware business in Listowel. I think he started in Tipperary, and his parents bought the place then, I think, in 1918. I worked above at Brian's Inn for a while after the I'd come to fill in the tough and cover and it's for after school. You'd have to go out there in a few shillings in the morning. They'd be all coming home in the creamery. There would be 20 pony and cars and nesting cars down along the street and inside in the yard, inside in um, brands. They'd done a terrible business there. And he was there then through the 20s, the 30s, the 40s, the 50s, the 60s, until 73. He died in 73. But in the meantime, Gerald had come into the business when he left school in the mid 40s. Yeah, he went into the shop as well. Post Television was in the village was a man by the name of Perry Mulvale. Perry Mulvey used to call him. He lived above there at the corner as you go up to the church. The Petsy Bunn's on the place now. It was one of the real old houses and the old pubs. You don't remember Charlie? No, I remember Perry Mulvey. He used to buy the chicken. That's right, and the eggs. Yeah. But he got a, a television, hit the pub, and there was a big room in at the back. And he did the first television. And to be packed every night. We all come in, we were drinking maybe lemonade or things like that. But that was the first television I remembered. That was in, in, in Emily. Early 60s? That was enough. Huh? When was it? Early 60s? It could be around the 60s, yeah. Started, yeah. yeah, around the 60s. But it was only black and white and yeah. it was all snow and all that. Like, <laughs> <laughs> it didn't light, it didn't light the day. Like. There are things were changing too that time. Very fast. You know, I'm sure there aren't, there's only a couple of pubs here now. We talked to him pubs here, weren't there? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Three. Three. Jesus. Is it three this year now? Yeah. And they all had their own customers and it was always people here. Sure. In the morning coming home from the creamery, I worked above at Brian's Inn for a while after the day. I used to go up there, fill in the trough and cover and it's you for after school. You'd have to go out there in a few shillings. And, um, in the morning, well the worst had when it's well over, but you come in, they'd be all coming home in the creamery. There would be 20 pony and cars and nesting cars down along the street and inside in the yard, inside in um, brands, they doing a terrible business there. That I'm sure that's all I got now. They're all going off in the town now. They've all these big shops and everybody doing business here and there. Yeah. 
Vi har aldrig arbetat under mannen som inte mest vi har under skapen in i dem. Vi har aldrig skapat mest under lågle. Det är inte så han nöjt sig. I'd love to see these days given. I never will. They were great days. People were great. Yeah. Neighbors were great. The families were great to the people. They were poorer. Do you know, they give you a bag of sponge yeah. to look after you. But they, there's no camaraderie, no, like there was at that. No, people are good in their own way, but yeah. it was a different world we lived in. Yeah. You know. Yeah. We haven't that today, you know. When did it change? When did you think it changed? I thought it was changing from the 70s on. The real change came. Yeah. I think wasn't it around that year? Yeah. You know, we got too influential. We got, we got more the cars and televisions, and we got on holidays and going to Spain, <laughs> going to Porto. You know. So we could hardly go to the pictures. <coughs> Packing nearly build the hall down there, we just go to the pictures. Just three pence, yeah. and we'd be walking half of the week to try and get that three pence to go to the pictures. This was a very vibrant village at one time.
Tell you an awful lot now about this little village of Imley and all the changes that have taken place over the years. This was a very vibrant village at one time. We had 13 pubs here in this little village at one time, and the vast majority of them as well, they had a grocery. Well, everyone had a ration book. Yes. And they were all the coupons, and the local shop, of course, was Tom DeWiles. Uh, at that time, and uh, we went to a ration book and they take up so many coupons that you got according to the amount of messages you got. Yes. If the, mes the, if the messages were rationed, if they weren't, you didn't need the book. Everybody had to shop at home. People didn't go to town in those days mm -hmm. because there were very few cars for staff and then there was the war years and there was no petrol and they didn't go. So every sh everybody shopped locally. But the thing is, they were well catered for locally. Mm. You had three drapery shops, mm. and you had the tailors, and you had the dressmakers, so there was no excuse like for not having your things made anyway. Yeah. You know? mm -hmm. um, now, as well as that, we had um, all need okay, We had a butcher's stall, Jack Lund's, the butcher's stall. You had, um, we had two forges, 
Started off in infants, it was mixed. You had boys and girls. The school teacher was Mrs. Mack. And the little woman who just come over from the prairie, she was a Mrs. Fahey, she was a school teacher. And then she was teaching for the, the infants, high infants and low infants, we used to call them that time. She would cycle out every morning from the prairie. We used to be praying for rain or snow that she wouldn't, <laughs> that she wouldn't be able to come at all. But I would pray that she was a lovely, lovely woman. We always were late because we had a long journey to walk and it was raining. We'd be taking shelter under a bush here or a bush there. Above at Pussels, which is now Breen's, there was a shoot coming out of the, of the, the cow horse, which was on the side of the road. And I saw some of the lads to go over and put their head under the shoes and let the water go down the, their back thinking they'd be sent home. Oh. When they were that way. Yes. He did work on a few occasions. <laughs> <laughs> when he had the teachers got wise to it for a finish, how was it they were all wet in the same place, you know? Wise. Yeah. We used to get a creepy feeling when we were coming <laughs> near the school. My father was a very strict man, and you could get a few letters. My mother wasn't that type of person, but it was in every home. And I tell you, I don't know how at all. And you were just out of school, and if you went home and told your parents, you get twice as many when you came home, because you were up to some development for doing it. In high infants, I went from there on to, I think it was, Fitzpatrick. He kept first, second and third class. Ah. Mr. Loftus kept fourth, fifth, sixth, and if there was three or four. And you had only three teachers though. Three teachers. But there was forty. In that class. The forty and fourth class. Then there was fifth class. I'd be in sixth class. Yes. And there was three and seventh class. That was Mr. Loftus's but he had a great, Mr. Loftus, he had a great interest in his pupils and how they went. But there was a lot of pupils that needed a little bit of individual tuition, if you like, that didn't get it. And couldn't get it. And couldn't get it because the teacher couldn't give it to him. Now he'd finish, he'd finish at three o'clock or half three in the evening and he'd have to take the homework then and take it home and check it out for the evening. He was working at home as well as in school. And you used to do a few runs there for, for Mr. Loftus? Uh. Oh, I was bringing Mr. Loftus's lunch for surely four years. When it comes to 12 o'clock in the day, he said, Me hard crock here, five more on. Was me hard crock here, and let it hear that out the door. <laughs> Escaped the catechism. People talk a lot of him. Although he could be brutal enough to when he liked. And would you be rewarded any bit at all for getting this lunch every day? Would I be what? Would you get rewarded? No, I'd have to cheat when I go down. Oh, no. yes. you know, I go down for his lunch. Yes. I'd bring up the sandwiches and a white gallon, a white uh, enamel gallon. I always remember it. I'd have the cheese there and sandwiches as well. We'll go to across the road to Daly's to the hotel oh. for our lunch. We get lovely ones that just come down from Thompson's and Cork. And then we uh, we just get permission to go down the street, to go down to Higgins's, 
we'd go down there for the bread and jam. Mm. So, so you can remember um, the um, shop opening then and at the cross, the wires? Was it? I don't remember, he just opened a little bicycle dish. A small little shed for a. Um, he was mending bicycles. Was there a shop there now? Where no, there was no shop there. Only, uh, only uh, um, a hedge and a uh, field. Okay. His wife was a great businesswoman. She was at, at the hotel in, at Daly's. Mm -hmm. She was in the bar there and doing the shop there. Mm -hmm. and she was she was from the Glen and she was a great businesswoman. Tom had um, a hackney car and he was travelled back at Daly's at the hotel. Mm -hmm. But he was sat in Minden bicycles and then he he built up from that. Mm -hmm. and that's where he ended with his shop. And of course there was no electricity, there was no running there water, there, there was no water. But of course the people, uh, people hadn't as much bills. The, the spuds, the bacon and the cabbage, like they were served up for the dinner. They were all home grow, home produced, like. They, they did people rare families on very small acreages of land, like, you know. They'd have been taught, like, how to make ends meet, like. People must remember everybody had to buy paraffin oil all the time because we had no electricity. So the only light we had were the lamps on the wall. But we had no water in the village. So we had a pump, we had Connell's pump, there was one outside the pub, we pump. One here. and there was one here, and there was, and there was one, one below, below yeah. Place, yeah. There, yeah. and then you had the barrels outside the rainwater for washing, you see, yeah. and of course no washing machines, and yeah. there was no electricity, and over, and scrubbing board. You yeah, sell the scrubbing boards, so yeah. above, yeah, yeah. yeah. When you think of it, like, all the labour there was, uh, those yeah. days, the hard work to be done, you know. But people didn't tend to have big families there, you know, the 10 and 11 and 12 children there, I don't know how they managed them children at all. And if they wanted to bat the children, what would they do, have a... No, we used to have their bells of water then as well, mm -hmm. you know, but we, yeah. we, we still, I still use uh, the bells, I still the have three bells. The galvanised bat in front of the fire. Oh, oh that's all, yeah. Maybe it's a small thing we washed in the middle of yeah. well. Going back to that time again, David Burke, your neighbour. Oh yeah. I don't know, he was a funny old geezer. The rest of his brothers, Mike and Morgan. Morgan was the man that founded the GEA and Emily. We we were we all we played home with us, you know. I was when we were home here and then we said the Holland the Holland League came on, you know, and we was we were mad for the Holland, you know. And we 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 got Ham Will and the Holland and Pecky Brennan. He, he, he was ahead of us there, and uh, I remember he saying, you, you could be good at all, and he said, at the football, he says, if you wanted to do it, he says, I don't want to put a bottle of this, <laughs> but anyway, the Holland would be on first of all, up for Christmas, and after the, after the Holland, you had to do the football, it was only our football, so of course we did the football then as well. Oh, yeah. oh Paddy and Ed's Yeah. I thought yes, he, he he put up that hair pattern there, he had it up for his machinery. The, 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 I suppose to around the time of the thrashing and all that during the emergency, he opened the post, of course, with, with, with pictures. Yes. And the first picture that was ever shown there was Maytime. 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 It was, uh, uh, what's it called? Oh, it was a special name for it. It was a musical. Oh. And their time, starring Janet MacDonald and who else? I can't bring the second name. And would you be well supported? Oh, of course you would. Be, be. In the early stages, it was well supported. But like everything, things die away after a while, too. Yes. Right. Yeah. And it, it was um, dances then held there. Um, what it was, there. it used to be a practice dance then every Wednesday night. We would go to him later then and so I was, I was off at the hood ball there and at the scrap. What was the scrap? You said you were at the scrap. It would be a uh, second night of the hood ball, it would be, uh, to be 10 shillings the first night and to be 3 and 6 the second night. That's what they called the scrap. Yeah. 
we learned Irish dancing here in the hall from a um, lady called um, Brady Downs from not long. Did you know? I just did oh, yeah, the right, of the yeah. county. Brady Downs came over every Saturday, mm -hmm. and we got our dancing lessons there. So we were fully occupied. There was no, it was never a dull moment. We made our own fun, our own amusement. But like we had all the, all the exercise, we had all the cycling. Skipping was a big thing for girls as well. We all had our skipping ropes. We'd skip by ourselves, or some two would hold it, and you'd skip, and you'd hop in the middle, and that's skipping and walking. No. We always used the railway. John, Stath John, Mr. John Stathry would be out on the bridge, warning us. We get killed. He didn't We didn't take the blindest bit of notice, you know. We carried on. Where would you have gone to by train for Mimli? I went we back to my aunt's in Charlotte for them. Oh yeah. In the train. Go to Tipperary in the train. And would you ever change at the junction and go into Tipperary? Travellers, they, they come by train to Emily. Yes. And. Their, their pony and trap, for those who be a sidecar, would need to travel at the train. And he'd come down to Mulhall's or to Daly's Hotel, and he might stay there for three or four days. So, Packy Ryan used to act as a, a courier? He was a courier, yeah, he was. And he'd do Galbury, he'd do Latin, he'd do Kildili, he'd do Emily. He could go to different places along. He could be selling foodstuffs, hardware, or whatever. He'd be taking orders from the people. And the stuff would arrive one day by train to Emory Station. And Packy Ryan Roney, yes. he'd go up with his dinner and car and bring down the stuff to the people that had it orders in Emory. And maybe take some of them to Latin or wherever. How would you get the mess on the Sunday then? Oh, on, on the trap car, yeah. horse and trap. We get bad frosts in there. Like. There was only a little bit of town, a bit of town, at the side of the road, where they flew. There was a bigger bow in the boat to throw off the, the water. Than the, than the, now the roads are flat now, mm. but they were raised a little bit in the centre to throw off the water. And, uh, if, if the horse that was tired and to be to be terribly slippery, there would be fierce frost there, and it'd be trying to bring on the horse by to keep him inside by the to travel on, on the on the roof inside. There'd be, there'd be one wheel inside, and that nearly to die. But um, we would get there, yeah. and then and the bad the bad told the horse couldn't travel at all. The bad frost. We walked the team, not about walking, half seven for half eight, Master Nimbley. Say the third day in Nimbley, anything like up to, I suppose, 50 or 60 wagon loads would go off to the north wall. Straight from Nimbley. So you would have no school in Nimbley a fair day. Would there be buyers coming? They'd be buyers coming, dealers, yeah. and they'd be they'd come the day before off of the train, and they'd be staying in the hotels. Well, they'd be up at four o'clock in the morning <coughs> to, to and get ready to go out, and it could be flogging rain. Yes, but you didn't mind. A young fellow didn't mind. Uh, you'd be looking forward to it. You know, the old top coat ready there on a the cap since the night before. And a stick for the drive the castle and what have you. Uh, all the windows would be blocked up, they'd be timber put up again them and again the doors and all the cattle were on the street. Cattle from the railway cross back nearly nearly as far as cattle's cross. Right. Now that was a fair stretch. And Just they were all walked along the road. They came up from Palace and from every place around. Everyone was walking cattle. Well, got the pubs to be packed out. Yes. And they put it up and down the streets and singing uh, the Valley of Knock and Oak. I remember where it was going to be, all the more river songs. And the cattle didn't, when they'd be bought. They'd be going taken off to the, they'd be taken off up to the railway hub and, mm. and taken off in the train. Mm. No mm. lorries that time, only up in the train. Mm. You'd have to take them to the station. Oh, yeah. 
We just walk up from from Molly's bit of like, and we walk up to through the street and down, and uh, I couldn't name a few houses, but the poverty and the children, the poverty was a terror in 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 the in the village. People that hadn't the clothes on them to fit, they'd be ashamed to be seen in them. The rags they were in, things are very poor at that. And they'd come to the church and they'd come to the outside the church and fill up the back of it. They would, they wouldn't dare go, go up the church. You would been privileged almost to be in, from from a, on a farm, or something. They, they had some had something decent. Uh, and, on the floor and the line of floors, like. Uh, and would you have, would you have had shoes now if you were dry, if you were walking over to? No, I have strong boots. There is an awful change in my lifetime, like in the farming end of it, like we say we milk cows by hand, we turned hay with a fork and made cocks of it and brought it out of the wick patch up on the hill, like you know. The boot care was for manure. There was sides in it and the back and you take it off. But in as well as that, when you go out to the field with the with the with the boot care, you pull down with an arm in it and you lift it up and the tongue and slide off it. You go in then you come out to me the fuck later on and you'd spread it. And then the trashing and all and that was an awful job. Because people hadn't any cookers that time only an open fire and trying to have a, a dinner and to keep it hot and everything for them. But you have a lot of people in... And you'd have, you'd have about 24 for a day of a, of a, of a thresher. Mm. And they, they wouldn't be all needed at all, but you'd have that crowd, they'd all gather around. Your husband Michael Collins' your... nephew was a... Was one and one of the inspectors coming around. Michael Collins, his nephew, was mm, it? Yeah, he was a lovely fellow too. Yeah. Mm. So you'd have to grow a certain amount of tillage. You'd have it? to grow a certain amount of tillage. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We had a, a plot down near the back of the cottage. We used to make here. That's it. It was about 1955 and 1956. But I was going to a man one time to dig potatoes. He was a very old man, and he was very bad in the eggs. When I was going to school, I used to go picking the potatoes for him. And then um, we were out to stay anyway. And we were cleaning, you'd have to go along the drill, you see, and pull all the scrag, clean the drill before you start digging. Well, they had a little plough in the horse. Everyone had cows, like, so many cows. Even somebody with an acre or two, they had a cow. They had, sure, even Dr. Jordan, like. He had, had a cow? Had two cows, he had two cows there. Ah. Oh, sure, they were making the cows and all, and out in the rain and out in the wet, and now people are talking about it, getting a drop of rain, and they have the umbrella over it. So you used to have to. I, I forgot a good ridge. Would you take the milk down to the cream in England? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Frank Harkin would bring it in the bucket. He would? Mm hmm. That's probably a great social thing in, 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 the, in the thing in Emily, in the cream in Emily as well. Oh, it was. That was it a was. way of people meeting, of course, every day as well. Going in, going to the shop, being in. Well, when the cream really shut their lake and uh, you wondered what you. What you do with the man and to start with, like you know. Mm -hmm. And then we'll say when the milking machine came in, was it a great? Uh, oh, it was a godsend. Yeah, was that more important nearly than the electricity? It was, it was, a, <laughs> it was very important. The yeah. milking machine. Yeah. yeah. I was talking to so-called well-to-do people at that time. I'm talking about, and when I meet them today, and they tell me. What they had at that time is a different. It was a lot different from what you had. It was a lot different at all from. Yes. One man described it very well when he said to me one day, we were talking about this very same thing. Look, Tommy, he said, none of us had anything at all, he said at that time, but by God, he said, didn't we share it between us? <laughs> you see, and he was no, right. He, he, had no, he, sh he had nothing but she shared us. <laughs> I remember you were rushing for the sugar 
Koblenz. Sugar, ja, Koblenz. Ja, ja, Koblenz. Und ich sag zwei Mal, ich wollte, wollte Sugar an. Tee. An Tee. Aber ich weiß, wir hätten Milch gesehen. Ja, so ist es. Und ich remember, the only way my mother could do was push your sugar in a, in a, in a jam jar. And that was it. I was just one on Monday or Friday, whichever, whenever to come, you know. And uh, we, all, we all had our course, you know, there wouldn't be any, you could eat it, you could have it all your sugar on the Monday, or I eat, so pull it on for the week, and we would submit it in a jam jar. My, my father was, um, I, I, I don't know, you, you see, he, he was one of the old IRA. Yes. And uh, he, so he was young, but uh, I suppose when he joined, maybe 18 or 19 or whatever, 20. Yes. And he was dead at 36. Yes. Because he was shot and wounded up at the back of the creamery, St. Elby's. And he lived on for about 18 years after that shooting. He died just the evening of the day that Paddy Connolly came to see him. They were good friends and he lived just up the road. And he said, Paddy, he says, my wound is oozing today like it always was. After that length of time. And of course in the, in the troubled times when they had the big the rescue. rescue of Sean Hogan at the station of La Clank. That was meant for Emily. Because the one coming from Cork used to meet the one coming from Dublin normally at Emily. And the, the, the big thing there was to rescue Sean Hogan. And, the, and that's the way they, they took over the house over there, where I was born there. The ta the, the Tans came in, you see, and they found out that there was a lot of bicycles left in that could out from Galway in the O'Briens. And they had planned to put all their stuff in, and they dug a, a, a little trench across the road, just above Pat's Gate, so that any trucks going out hit it in, but the ones that knew it went that way. And to set up for yeah, here, but the Greyhound is not travelling today. Was the SOS that came through? They christened him the Greyhound. Right. But the train did come. What is it? Timing it with the other one, and they had to have the second train. But the, the timing it with that, they maintained the great meeting locked down, which they did. And uh, Sean Hawkins would be there in the carriage, you see. Policeman there, 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 there. Our house, unfortunately, my father said, was, wasn't put. Because his mother, his, unfortunately. Mother, his, mother, his mother was very ill at the time. And someone begged it from and said there was a woman in the bed there. And strangely enough, the only thing they bought was the hair bar. But I remember the, to hear him talking about the barrack being burned in Emily and Quish's house was burned and Kelly's house was burned and McGrath's house was burned. And Slattery's initial by hand was burned as well. Yes. And who, who else? Or well, Michael Quish's and Balhorn. Yes. Um, Tom Quish's, there were no, no Michael and Tom, they were brothers of course, they were living in the one house, but Callahan was important because the old woman, who was my mother, she was my grandmother of course too, she wouldn't get out of the bedroom to let them burn the house. She said, if you want to burn it, you'd have to burn it with me in bed. I can't move. I strip it completely. And whoever was in charge, the, house, the officer said, come on and leave the old bitch where she is. <laughs> Uh, you, you mentioned slightly is there of, of this by hand, um, you know, and um, Tom's uncle Willie Willie Slattery. Willie Slattery. He he met a, a terrible end. He did indeed, yeah. They just came in. The black and tans came in. He was he he was just in for his dinner. In the middle of the day. In the middle of the day, and they came in around the place, and 
who was working here was K Kate Hogan from Mrs Lundergan. Yes. After she was working here, like, and uh, she's, what did you say? They just came in. They came from different directions. He had no chance of escaping or. So it was well. It was. It was. It was well planned. It was well, well planned. planned. Yeah, it was well planned. So Elby Kelly told me a lot yes. of what went on. So Elby was on the move, same as the rest of them. Yeah, he he know. But the lawyers pulled up, he said. The two lawyers that were there, they pulled up. <coughs> Michael Quish was in one of the lawyers. Yes. And Slattery was in the other one. Yes. And they, they took him off of the lawyer and they slapped him up against the, con the stone wall. And they kept beating him his head off the wall until he fell down unconscious on the ground. Yes. And Michael Quish told it to uh, Elby Kelly after. He said, I said to him, the soldiers that, that I was with, can't you stop him? They'll kill him. Oh, he said, we have nothing to do. They are a mother gang. They do the same to us. Right, right. There's right. nothing we can do. Yeah. Only look what we are told. So, so they tied him onto the back of the lorry and his head, it appeared, was hopping off of the road that he had practically no head when he arrived in Tipperary. And seemingly over near Roseborough he was um, thrown out of the back of the truck. Just below Latin on the left hand side. They took him to Tipperary? Yeah. And your granduncle and Mulcahy men, where John Lee is living. The Mulcahy men, I think, in Delaney, he was a criminal manager, was he? Yeah, he was, there was, yes. The two of them, I think, went in later on the day of the day to find out what happened to him, and sure, of course, came home with the news that he was dead, like, you know? My granny now that lived with us here, like. She lived till 1968. 1968, yes. But uh, she never spoke of him. Like. Too hard. Mm. She never spoke of him at all. Uh, just above Pat Hennessy's former home, there was a pub there, and that was Lonergan's. And we all know the bit of history attached to that, that the two IRA, or two uh, black and tan sitting at the counter, and in the mirror they saw someone running across the field behind them, mm -hmm. and they went out and they shot him. That was Jesse Mara from That's right. Bellahorn. Mm -hmm. The other man that had a big influence in the War of Independence no. was um, Morris Mead. Morris Mead, oh yeah. No, um, captured by, he was originally um, in the British Army. And oh, he was. He yeah. wasn't, he, he was in it as a young fellow. Yes. He, he was only about 16. Uh, he told me himself. And, uh, but his sister got him out and told him that he was underage, so they told him to go home. But he made another go after again, and they didn't follow him anymore. Yeah. So he joined the army then and went out. He was in, gave a good fight in, in the First World War. Yes. He could be a bit of a bully and he could be terrible nice, you know. And he joined um, the East Limerick. Um, the East Limerick Brigade, he did, yeah. yeah. In uh, Kilfinnan. Um, yeah, and he he went back to, along to his own place when he came back. And um, he went into the barrack in Hilton. Yes. And, and the policeman there pulled a quick one on him. And he, he had gone on the phone to tell him he had him. So they came and collected him. Not after he escaped at all, because after that he escaped. Yes. From yes. Clown Mill. From Clown yeah. Mill, yes. Yeah, yeah. And would you, would you have known much about the war at the time, actually? Would you, you know, from, from, would you have got a newspaper every day now to tell you what was going on? We would. Yeah, there was a newspaper every day, a penny. A penny for the newspaper. My granddad would always say, he, 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 he gets a newspaper from. The boy would be the, uh, the newspaper from the Kremlin. The same as we were doing all the time. <laughs> so you think of Homer? Homer, you might read the dates straight away. Yeah. Oh, no, of course they But um, they were hard times. Yeah. No, people had to be a bit frugal in the way they, 
the work the money was scarce and everybody was employed. You had brands above now. There was two men working in the yard. And there was a girl in the shop. And they had a girl in the kitchen. And you could buy anything you wanted there. Turf, coal, oil, paint, butter, paint, tea, sugar, glass, timber. Anything at all you'd be talking about from an anchor, from Neil to an anchor, they had it at brands. Tell me, when did your father come to Emily first and how he set up his business? Yeah. He came in 1918, but when he left school, he uh, served his time for the hardware business in this door. I think he started in Tipperary. And his parents bought the place then, I think, in 1918. I worked above at Brian's Inn for a while after the I used to go up there, fill in the tough and cold when it's you for after school. You'd have to go out there in a few shillings. In the morning, they'd be all coming home in the creamery. There would be 20 pony and cars and nesting cars down along the street and inside in the air, inside in um, Brian's, they done a terrible business there. And he was there then through the 20s, the 30s, the 40s, the 50s, the 60s, until 73. He died in 73. But in the meantime, Gerald had come into the business when he left school in the mid-40s. Yeah, he went into the shop as well. Post Television was in the village was a man by the name of Perry Mulvey. Perry Mulvey used to call him. He lived above there at the corner as you go up to the church. The Petsy Bunn's on the place now. It was one of the real old houses and the old pubs. You don't remember Charlie? No, I remember Perry Mulvey, he used to buy the chickens. That's and right, and the eggs. And, uh, but he got a, a television, hit the pub, and there was a big room in at the back. And he did the first television. And it would be packed every night. We all come in, we were drinking maybe lemonade or things like that. But that was the first television I remembered. That was in, in, in Emily. Early 60s? That was an offer. Huh? When was it, early 60s? It could be around yeah. the 60s, yeah. Yeah, around yeah, the 60s. But it was only black and white and yeah, it was all snow and all that. And light. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't light, it didn't light the day. Like. There are things were changing too that time. Very fast. You know, Chantal does not need a couple of pubs here now. We talked to him pubs here one time. Yeah, no. Three or now? Three. Three. Jesus. Is it three this year now? And they all had their own customers and it was always people here. Sure. In the morning coming home from the creamery, I worked above at Brian's Inn for a while after the day. I used to go up there, fill in the tough and cold when it's you for after school. You'd have to go out there in a few shillings. And um, in the morning, well, the worst had run its way over, but you come in, they'd be all coming home in the creamery. There would be 20 pony and cars and nesting cars down along the street and inside in the yard, inside in um, Brands, they done a terrible business there. That I'm sure that's all I got now. They're all going off in the town now. They have all these big shops and everybody doing business here in that. Yeah. They all there was in the morning coming into mess to be all doing their shopping in Nimbly. All the shopping was done locally. Yeah. Didn't do it all now, you see. I'd love to see these days given. I never will. They were great days. People were great. Yeah. Neighbours were great. The farmers were great to the people, they were poorer. Mm -hmm. Do you know, they give you a bag of spuds yeah, yeah. to look after you. But they, there's no camaraderie, no, like there was at that. No people are good in their own way, but yeah. it was a different world we lived in. Yeah. You know, yeah. we haven't that today, you know. When did it change? When did you think it changed? I'm sure it was changing from the 70s on. The real change came. Yeah. I think it wasn't there all that year. You know, we got too influential with her. I got more of the cars and televisions and we got on holidays and going to Spain and going to Porto. You know. So we could hardly go to the pictures. <coughs> Peggy nearly built a hall down there, we just got the pictures. There's three pins. Yeah. And we'd be walking half of the week to try and get that three pins. To go to the pictures. This was a very vibrant village at one time. <laughs> 